Our next near-death experience was sent into the channel's email from a subscriber who recalls drowning at age 17 and meeting Jesus face to face on the other side. Before I begin though, please take a second and tap that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. It is completely free to do, and it helps this channel grow. And now let's get into this NDE. Cedric writes, Hey Beyond Death, I am sending you my own near-death experience, and you can use it for your channel with my permission. I have waited more than 10 years to tell this to anyone because I didn't think I would be believed, and at first I am not sure I even believed it myself. I had just completed my junior year in high school and was invited to a pool party at a friend's house to celebrate the start of summer vacation. Being the typical teenagers, we managed to secure alcohol for the party. Word to the wise, alcohol and pool parties are not a good combination. Either someone drinks too much and pukes in the pool, or someone drinks way too much and grows beer muscles. That was the case with me. After funneling one too many I noticed another guy, whom I did not know by the way, standing next to my girlfriend and speaking to her. Not only had I noticed, a few of my friends did as well and began to egg me on telling me that I needed to go handle that immediately or surrender my man card. This other guy appeared to be half my size weight-wise. I was a defensive lineman on the school's football team, so I was pretty big. There was no way I was going to be disrespected in this manner, so I strolled over and proceeded to use my finger to poke the guy in his chest while letting loose a string of obscenities that would have made a marine blush. I honestly wish I could blame the alcohol for what happened next, However, to be blunt, this skinny pint-sized boy kicked my butt in the worst way imaginable. In front of my girlfriend, all of her friends and all of my friends, he hit me with a series of fast jabs and followed it all with a roundhouse kick to my face knocking me into the pool. As I sank beneath the surface I saw blood flowing from my face and mixing with the water, and then I felt everything go black. It was as if someone simply turned off the lights and put me to bed, but the lights slowly faded out. I do not remember any pain whether that be because of how drunk I was or because I had just been knocked unconscious I do not know. The next thing I remember is waking up and seeing myself laying on the side of the pool where a friend's dad was attempting to give me CPR. I was watching closely at first, unaware at that time that I should not be watching this from above then it hit me. I was not in my body. I was hovering a few feet above and off to the side slightly. People were talking but I could not hear what they were saying. I glanced over to where the guy that had kicked me was standing and saw several of my supposed friends patting him on the back. Suddenly I was pulled upwards into a tunnel. Now let me tell you that I had no religion up to this point, no religion at all. I was not an atheist but I was also nothing else either. At only 17 years old, I did not feel like religion was something I had to decide yet. There was plenty of time for picking a god later, I thought. In the tunnel time just stopped. I became aware that time did not exist and was only an earthly thing that we don't take with us when we depart. There is no need for time in the infinite realm. Even today, I still have trouble saying, in heaven, because I am not 100% sure that is where the tunnel took me. After traveling some distance I began to see a white light that got brighter the closer I got to it. This light grew in brightness until it was brighter than even the sun however this was a different type of light. I could look directly at it without burning my eyes and it gave off a vibration of love. Pure unconditional love. This felt amazing. I cannot even begin to explain how great this love felt other than to say that it went beyond the scope of human understanding. There are simply no words to accurately describe it. When I reached the light, I saw a lot of white orbs floating all around it. They appeared to be made of the same love the light was and they seemed to be connected to the light without any type of umbilical. I could just tell these orbs were part of the light itself. For the first time, this light spoke to me. If you could call it speaking, the words were heard directly inside my head and whenever I answered the light, I only had to think the answer and it knew. It made me realize how tiresome the very act of earthly communication is. 
The first words the light spoke to me were, are you ready for your life review? I didn't know whether saying yes was the correct answer, but that's the answer my being projected. Did I really have a choice to delay the life review by saying no? Anyway, as soon as I said yes, a screen appeared and I watched my life. There are many NDE on Beyond Death as well as other channels that describe this process, so it is not my intention to repeat what is already known while adding nothing of value. Yes, I saw many scenes where I could have made a better decision. Yes, I felt the emotional pain that I had inflicted so many times on other people. Looking back now, I know I was not a good person. And lastly, no, I was not judged by the light. However, I have often thought that since I was not going to be staying and was going to be sent back, maybe there will still be a final judgment from God. And maybe the purpose of the life review is a simple kick in the butt to show us we need to change some things before that day arrives. I don't know. After the life review, the light stated matter of factly, he is coming. I had no clue who this he was that the light was referring to but I began to feel apprehensive about the possibilities. Could the light have meant God? Beyond the light I began to see a hooded figure approaching me. I dropped to my knees immediately and when he got close enough that he could reach out and touch me he stopped and began laughing. Rise, he stated. As I stood up he put his hand on my shoulder and told me not to be afraid. Then he asked me, do you know me? Raising my eyes to his face, I said, Are you Jesus? Yes, he replied. Now that you know me, you are to return to earth and tell people of meeting me, and let them know I have not forgotten them. The time soon comes when humanity will join me in paradise. At this point, an angel took my arm and guided me back into the tunnel where I returned to earth. I don't know how long I had been gone, but my friend's father was still performing CPR on me. With a heavy-handed shove, the angel reunited my soul with my body, and I began to cough up lots of water. Then I puked into the pool. After a few minutes, I was able to get first to my knees, then to stand up. I found out later just how lucky I really was that day that Jesus was watching over me as my friend's dad would not let anyone call an ambulance because he was scared he would be charged with giving alcohol to minors. My girlfriend. Well, she left me. But that wasn't really a loss in the grand scheme of things. In fact, the entire experience was a hidden blessing. I learned I had friends that weren't loyal and that there was life after death. I was not given a date that Jesus will return, but I know that he will, and I will be ready after changing all the toxic traits I learned I had during my life review. The first few weeks I was back I told several of my friends and family about meeting Jesus and the message he told me to deliver. Some people thought I was joking, others thought I was crazy and my mother asked me if I was on the pot, as she called marijuana at the time. I eventually stopped telling anyone. Well, I did not mean to turn this email into a book, but I wanted to be as accurate with what I saw on the other side as possible. Feel free to edit it if needed. Cedric. Note from Beyond Death. No part of this ND he has been edited. As always, you receive all the information provided to me. God bless.